Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to start a four-part series in which we take three of the most highly regarded self-defense rounds in the 223 and 556 caliber and pit them against each other to find the strengths and weaknesses of each one. All right, so we have three different types of ammunition here. We have the Hornady TAP. That stands for the Tactical Application Police. We have that in both the 55 grain Urban, which is a polymer tipped round, and then we have the 75 grain BTHP or Boat Tail Hollow Point. Finally, we have the Black Hills 50 grain, and that's classified as a Barnes TSX bullet, which is a Triple Shock X. Now this should be really exciting. We're gonna pair these up against each other in four different tests. We've got Bear Gelatin, which we will be conducting today. Uh, in future videos, we're gonna be shooting them through car doors, auto glass, and then we're going to finish it off by firing through some drywall to see which one would perform better in a home defense situation. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Black Hills Ammunition 50 grain TSX projectile. That's an all copper 5.56 round made with Lake City brass which has been annealed to extend its life. Now this ammunition was created by Black Hills to mitigate some of the problems that our forces were seeing downrange in places like Afghanistan and Iraq. They were shooting their standard ammo, you know, their XM-193Js and their M855s at the enemy. And uh, as those rounds went through things like car windshields or car doors, they were losing a lot of power. So to fix this, Black Hills created this round here. Uh, it's an all-copper projectile that uh, has most of the mass at the base of the round. Now, most bullets that were created to punch through small barriers have the mass in the front of the round, which works for punching through barriers, but it's not as accurate as your standard ammo. So by putting most of the mass in the base of the round, Black Hills created something that got the best of both worlds. Now this ammo is called barrier blind ammunition. It's meant to punch through barriers while maintaining all of its mass, going into soft targets and expanding very violently to roughly 0.2, uh, 0.224 to uh, 50 cal and then traveling through the entire target. So today we're going to be testing that using our Mini 14. We're going to get a three shot average for all three types of ammunition and then we're going to be punching it through that clear gel. Let's see how the Black Hills performed. It hit the gel, it had good shot placement at the, uh, actually immediately it started expanding there. Sometimes we see rifle rounds that wait about an inch or two before they start peeling uh, back and expanding, but this one really wasted no time. Here at the two inch mark, we see that nice big permanent cavity that's about 0.4 inches in diameter. And that stretches all the way out here until about the nine inch mark where it ends. And then we don't really see much going on here until the end of the block. So if we move on here from the nine inch mark, we can see that the bullet created two full rotations and expanded fully. From here, we don't see a lot of damage through the gel, but it did penetrate all the way through the 16 inch block of gel and made it into our backup block. Now it penetrated three and a half inches here for a total penetration of 19 and a half inches. And uh, we have the bullet inside of there. So I'm gonna pull that out and we're going to wait and see if it retained all of its weight like uh, Black Hills Ammunition claims that it'll do. So next up we have the Hornady Tap 75 grain BTHP. Now it entered the block in the dead center here and didn't start expanding till the 3 inch mark and that's what I was talking about with that Black Hills Ammunition. Now at the 3 inch mark to the 6 inch mark we see very violent and rapid fragmentation. Uh, there's a 0.5 inch permanent cavity that reaches all the way out to that 6 inch mark and at that six inch mark, we see some blackened ballistics gelatin. That means that there's a possibility of an explosion inside the gel, which uh, translates in real world terms to a really good transfer of kinetic energy. Now at the seven inch mark, a piece of jacket started coming off of the bullet and actually came towards the camera. This is only a centimeter from the edge of the ballistics gelatin. 
And the same thing happened here at the nine inch mark on the opposite side of the gel. This piece of uh, jacket here is only an inch from the right side of the gelatin. So that's an entire affected area of five inches. Now the base of the bullet continued to push all the way through the ballistics gelatin and actually left a sizable cavity and uh, fragmented along the way here. This is a 0.25 inch cavity and it reached all the way out to the 16 inch mark here. Now, I've never seen this before, but most of the round is here at the 16 inch mark and is just about punching through the gel. You can kind of feel it on the outside. It's a little bit of a bump, but it's still inside the ballistic skeleton. So with an overall penetration of 16 inches and this kind of damage inside the ballistic skeleton, uh, I'd have to say that this is a very effective round. Last up, we have the Hornady Tap 55 grain urban round. Now this round has a polymer tip, which allows it to fragment inside of soft tissue and break up inside of barriers, apparently. Uh, we're gonna get more in depth on the history and the use of this round in a future video where we test these rounds against uh, walls and ballistic gelatin to see how they do in a home defense situation. But today, let's just see how it did against the ballistic gelatin. Uh, the bare ballistic gelatin, the bullet struck here, and at the one inch mark started fragmenting. Uh, we see a very violent and rapid fragmentation. It lasted only about two and a half inches out into about the three and a half inch mark here. Uh, at that point, we can see pieces of lead, jacket, and polymer tip in a four inch diameter affected area of tissue, which is quite large, especially for a defensive round. You'd expect to see that with a varmint round. Now out here at the six inch mark, we see a nice piece of lead fragmentation and the final large piece of frag out here at the six and a half inch mark. Now the base of the round did continue on from that six and a half inch mark all the way out here to the 10 and a half inch mark. Uh, now it did tilt upwards just slightly, but it, for the most part, it maintained its original trajectory. Uh, but overall, this round penetrated to 10 and a half inches, which is pretty low if you're thinking about a rifle cartridge, but for what this is designed to do, it actually performed just as it was intended to. Now, I want to know what you guys think. Uh, what was your favorite round of the day? What do you think was the most effective? And how do you think they're going to do in a future test with the uh, windshield, the car door, and the walls? Thanks for watching today, guys. If you have any questions, post them below. And please subscribe. It really helps us out. All right, guys. Have a nice day.